Look at that. Throw them. Throw. Did I just flick a booger at everybody? I, I don't know if I'm an appropriate teacher for Scratch Jr. Hey kids, welcome to the Scratch Jr. Show. I'm your host, Mr. Matt, and you'll need Scratch Jr. downloaded on your iPad or Android tablet. No, it doesn't work on computers or phones, so if you don't have it downloaded on your tablet, just ask your mom like this. Mom, can I download an educational app that will make me smarter? Okay, that's a bit of much, but your mom will probably say, yeah, sure, that sounds great. What's cool about Scratch Jr. is you can use your finger for other things like building video games. Probably should wipe that up. <laughs> this show is for kids. 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 <laughs> All right, so if you've never used Scratch Jr. before, then you're probably, when you open it up, you're going to land on this page. And you'll be like, oh, what do I push the question mark? Or, well, the question mark has a whole bunch of information to answer your questions, but I'm going to answer those for you right now, right now. Hold on to your seat. <laughs> so first thing let's do, let's hit the home button. The, you can't see what my finger's doing, can you? <laughs> I have too much fun on this show, I know. Okay, so here are my projects, and it'll probably have an example project if you've never made one, but I'm gonna go ahead and make my own first project by clicking the plus sign. There's so many buttons everywhere. What do I do? Okay, calm down. Breathe, everybody. First, on the left side, Wait a minute, I have to make sure my hand goes the correct way. Let me point at the right place, right there. Up there at the top, you see a scratch cat with a plus sign underneath. And if you click that plus, you can actually add more characters. We call them sprites, but you can call them characters. Sprites, characters, they're the same thing. Oh, there's a rainbow-haired octopus. I'm going to click on that one. Nothing happened. Uh, you have to hit the checkbox in the top corner. There, once you hit the checkbox, then it adds that sprite or character to your game. Now I have two characters and I can kind of drag them around. That's so cool, but they're standing on a white backdrop. Uh, that's so boring. How do I change that? Well, right at the top, there's a picture, a beautiful picture of a mountain with a blue sky. It's very small, do you see it? Click on that right in the top at the middle, and then you can change the backdrop. What do I want to change this to? Uh, well, it's hot right now outside. It's summertime, so maybe I want to change it to winter. I'm going to click the winter theme, and then I'll click that check mark there. <laughs> Poor Scratch Cat. He's freezing. We need to give him some clothes. And the octopus? <laughs> Is that an octopus? I... I don't know. What do you think? What do you think that one is? Anyways, let's start coding. First, we need to decide which character sprite are we going to code first. Let's code the scratch cat first. So we'll click on the cat so it's selected. Now look at the bottom. There's all these coding, we call them blocks. These are kind of instructions you give to the game. Like, what's it going to do? The first instruction you usually give are the yellow ones. So on the far left, click the yellow start block. And then you'll see on the right side, you'll see a green flag. I'll just kind of click on it and then drag it. You just kind of drag it down. Look, I'll drag them all down so you can see them all. And we'll talk about each one. No, we won't. Let's just talk about one of them. Let's talk about the win clicked. There we go. Wait a minute, how do I get rid of them? Okay, so to get rid of the ones you don't want, just throw them back into the pile. Look at that, throw them, throw. Did I just flick a booger at everybody? I, I don't know if I'm an appropriate teacher for Scratch Junior. Perhaps we can hire somebody else in the future. Anyways, what about you? Do you think you could teach it? Maybe. So I have this starting block here that says when the character is touched, or we, we'd like to say in programming, when clicked or on click. Okay, so when it's clicked, what is it gonna do? Let's go to the motion blocks. The motion blocks are blue. So click on the left to the blue motion blocks. And let's, let's try a couple. Here is a move to the right. Here is a move up. Whoops, you have to click on it and then drag it down. 
Sometimes there's a delay and then I add too many, so I just throw them away. Let's click these together and see what happens. Ah, there we go. Now to run the game, we just click on, well, we click on the character, huh? That's how we programmed it. So I'll click the character and he went over one and up one. But how far is one? One? One what? One uh, mile? Did he move one mile? Did he move one inch? Units in Scratch are actually determined by how far on the screen the character has moved. There's a great helper at the top. If you go to the very top in the center, there's some graph paper. Click on that graph paper and you'll notice that suddenly the screen has these lines going across it. Well, each one of those squares is one unit of distance. So if the cat is going to go over one and up one, watch this when I click them, it's the exact same distance on the graph paper. We can change this distance by clicking on the number underneath the code block and then choosing a different number. I'm going to choose 10. So now he'll go 10 over and then instead of going up, let's change that so that he goes down and he goes down five. Now let's click him and he goes over and then down. Pretty cool. Now the scratch cat has code, but the octopus doesn't actually do anything yet. So let's fix that. First, click on the octopus. Its name is Tack. What a strange name. Okay, so this Tack the octopus doesn't have any code in the bottom. Isn't that funny? Shouldn't it have code? No. Each sprite or character needs to be coded independently or separately. So let's have this sprite do something when the cat touches it. Isn't that cool? So click on the yellow starting blocks and then look for the block that looks like two people are holding hands. There we go. And let's drag that in. There it is. It looks like they're arm wrestling. It actually means when one sprite touches another. So when they're colliding is what we say in programming. When they're colliding, it sounds funny though. Oh no, the cat collided with the octopus and there was an explosion of ink. <laughs> Should we do that? That would be funny. All right, so let's just make it real simple. What's going to happen when they run into each other? Uh, let's have them say something. And this to say something is in the purple menu. And you'll see it says, hi. There, that's pretty simple. Hi, that's so boring. Can't we just say something else? Well, click on where it says hi and we can say, please don't touch me. There we go. So I'll click go. And then now that code block will run if they're touching. So let's put the, well, we have to put the, the cat in a position where it'll actually touch the, uh, the octopus. And it worked. It said, please don't touch me. But just saying it isn't as cool as like hearing it. So let's see if we can find a recording block. And that's in the sounds right here. And well, it says there's a pop and then there's a record button. Let's click the record one. Ah, we can record. I'll click the record button. Please don't touch me and stop. All right, I'll click the check mark. And now we have that recording. So instead of having the words, I'm going to throw that away. I'm going to add that recording right there. Now let's get them far away. And let's reset the game by pressing the green flag and touch the cat. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. <laughs> it's still going. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. That, that's funny. So after, <laughs> after they collide or touch each other, let's have the, uh, let's have the octopus move to a different location. So we'll go and go to the move blocks and we'll, we'll let, let's let him go to the left and then we'll go up. Let's change this number to eight. There we go. So this should work pretty well. Let's start the game again. I'll push the cat. Push the cat once. Please don't touch me. And there he goes. He moves away. Now, what I'd like it to do is to go to a different scene. Now, remember, we have these backdrops on the right hand side and you'll see a plus symbol. You can actually add a new scene to the game. Oh, I, I want to get rid of that graph paper, too. So let's click on the, the not graph paper. There it is. I made it full screen. 
<laughs> I pushed the wrong one. So click on the, the graph paper again. It will remove it. And let's choose a different backdrop. And this time, let's choose the night scene. Uh, and I'll push check mark. There it is. Ah, now it's in the dark. But my characters have all disappeared. What happened? Well, the characters all have, or the sprites all have their own code and they all live on one backdrop. So if you switch the backdrop, watch this, or the scene, those characters may or may not exist depending on whether or not you put them in the game. So in scene one, there is an octopus and there is a cat. But in scene two, there's nothing but a cat because they always give you a cat. In fact, if you want to get rid of the cat, just put your mouse over, hold down, and then click the X button and it's gone. Now there's nothing. It's so boring. So let's add something to this scene. Uh, let's add a pig. <laughs> there we go. And then there's a pig in the middle and it doesn't have any code. So let's say uh, when the game starts on here, when the game starts, this piggy will jump up and down. <laughs> This is my one of my favorite code blocks. It's called the hop block. And you determine how far he hops up by changing the number at the bottom. So I'm going to have him go up four. There he is. And now I want him to keep hopping. So what do you do if you want it to keep going over and over again? You go to the control blocks, which are orange. There it is. And there's a repeat block. So we have a repeat right here and you can wrap it around your block. So now he's going to jump up and down four times. Why? Because the repeat block says four. Let's see how that works. Let's start the game there. He's just jumping four times. What if I want to make him jump forever? That's impossible. How can you do that? Well, there's a cool block in the end blocks. You see these red ones? There's actually a forever loop right there. So let me show you how you, this does. I'm going to undo all these blocks. I'm going to have them jump, and then this block will make that repeat. Isn't that cool? So let's just see what that looks like. I'll throw this away. There it is. Now we'll start it, and now he jumps forever. But how do you make the different scenes or backdrops change during a game? Well, we're actually in the right menu. Do you see this block right here? This is the scene changing block. So how do we use it? Well, let's go to the first scene in the game. So scene one, which is in the snow, after our code blocks run, we want to change the scene. Or more specifically, when after the character, the, the octopus moves away. That's when we want to change the scene. So we'll put the change scene block right there. And so the only scene available is the, the night one. You can add up to four scenes to your game. There, this should work perfectly. So to play this game, when we want to show it to our friends, we don't want to show them the code. We want to show them the final game. So up at the top next to the grid paper, you see the full screen button. You hand the game to them and they go, for me? Thank you so much. Let me play your game. So you click the start flag to start everything. And then in this game, you have to press the cat. Please don't touch me. And now it changes. <laughs> That's what I look like in the morning. Where's my breakfast? Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this bouncing pig tutorial. Go ask your parents to download Scratch Junior, build something awesome. I can't wait to see what you make.